Dave Palumbo with Muscle Serpents University. And guess what? We're gonna be talking about white snakes. And white snakes are cool. If you wanna find out what the difference is between an albino and a leucistic boa, stay tuned. All right, we're here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas, and we're gonna do a little educational series on something that a lot of people are confused about. You know, of course the snake experts out there kind of think this is second nature, but I know a lot of guys who are just getting into the reptile field, just getting, you know, their first snake or two, and they really don't know the difference between what a leucistic boa and an albino boa is. So I figured I'd give you guys a little bit of a, an educational uh, lesson here. Now, you know, I'm new to the trade as well, but you know, in school when I studied genetics, you know, we learned that there is a difference between albinism, which is a lack of melanin or black pigment, leucism is a lack of all pigment, whereas albinism is a lack of just melanin. Now, in the boa constrictor world, uh, right now we have two albino lines of boa constrictor. One is known as the original Call albino, that Pete Call founded, and the other is the Sharp albino that Brian Sharp founded. Let's take a look at a Call albino and see what it looks like. So I'm gonna open up my little drawer over here. Let's see what we got. And here is Nadia, a sun glow albino alboa, which means that she's got albino and she's got a hypogene in her as well. One copy of it. She actually might be a super hypo, we're not sure, until we breed her out when we, when, uh, we breed her with uh, a male next year, hopefully. Um, she's not, you know, cooperating so well here, but she is uh, in probably going into shed pretty much. She's a little dull, but as you can see, the albino boa constrictors lack all black pigment. She just has yellow, white, and orange. Now this was all white when she was a baby, and now she's gotten a little yellower as she gets older. That, that's co pretty common with uh, albino boas. And she wants to get off the camera. She's, she doesn't want to participate in this interview. But as you can see, once again, no dark pigment here whatsoever. But she does have the uh, xanthophores, which create the yellow, and the uh, erythropores, which create the orange or reddish colors in her. Okay? Now, Brian Sharp discovered another line of boa, of boa constrictor in the albino category, and the Sharp albino, and I'm gonna show you this now to contrast it. This one's a little bit smaller. This was produced by Manny Freight, our good friend, and this is a Sharp albino. This actually carries the gene for blood as well, but it's not visual. So this is a Sharp albino male, and you can see the little bit of nuance of differences, uh, the way the patterning goes. And once again, no black pigment, but red, yellows, and whites. So this is a pigmented snake, it just lacks melanin, which is the dark pigments. Now, if you go one step further and you say, you know what, we wanna get rid of all pigment, okay? That's called leucistic. That's a leucistic bone. I got one in my lap right here, Kira. Look at look at the look at how the performance uh, we have with these boas. They're behaving really well. This is a leucistic boa, also known as a super fire diamond. Uh, but Jeremy Stone originated this line, and this is devoid of all pigment, as you can see. It is a, every once in a while, I see a little freckle here or there, but by and far, it's got no pigment. It's got black eyes with red pupils, okay, which are really really cool. And this has no pigment. It's completely white. Uh, the way you produce this, and by the way, albinism and leucism are all recessive traits. The fire diamond, okay, the regular fire, uh, is, a, is not really a, a normal looking snake. It's, it has a, a unique pattern of its own. It's a lightened version of a, uh, of a boa. And kind of like the fire gene in ball pythons are. When you combine two fires and you get two copies of it, you get a white snake. And that's how this snake is produced. So two fire diamonds produce a super fire and you get this beautiful leucistic snake. Uh, with the albinism gene, same thing. A, a non-visual het uh, albino has no, you can't really tell that it's albino. When you put the two together and you get the two copies of the gene, you get the lack of black pigment and you get your 
snake here. I think this I think this snake is actually in the process of shedding, if you look, just as we got her on the table here. That's pretty cool. She just is going to shed, and we're actually getting a little view of her shedding. And uh, once again, I think white snakes are super cool. I know most people out there want white snakes. Hopefully, next year we might make a white boa constrictor, and we'll have a couple for sale. That'll be our first ones. I know everyone, this is in, especially in Asian countries, this white boa is revered. And you can understand why. It's a really cool snake. And this, this one's not even that big yet. She's a year old, a little over, and you know we're feeding her slowly and getting her up to size. Uh, I don't think that she'll be ready to breed next year, but we have some het fire diamonds that are going to probably, hopefully, breed, and we'll see if we can produce a white snake. And obviously, she might produce next year if she ever gets her shed off. And uh, this guy, once again, the males can uh, breed at a much younger age. I think he's going to be ready to breed next year as well. Uh, whether I'll have a female to breed him to, I don't know. But once again, leucism, total lack of pigment, albino, lack of melanin. Don't confuse those two. Remember, you heard it here from Dave Palumbo at Muscle Serpents University.